Okay, what we got here is the Arduino, and it's hooked up with an Ethernet module and an expansion board. And the expansion board has a Firecracker C17A module on it. And what this does is runs all the X10 stuff. So what we did is wrote a web server that runs on the Arduino, and it's written in C. And then here's the page that the Arduino puts up. And it's got a bunch of little buttons on it. And when we click the buttons, it'll do things. So we can turn the lights on and off in the room, etc. So if we want to turn the, the light on, there's a light right behind the computer right there. So we're going to back it up a little bit so you can see what happens. See the light. And I'm going to move the mouse around. And then I'm going to click the turn the den table light button on. And the light comes on. If I slide down here and I click the button, the light goes off. And what's really neat about this is there's no program in the PC to do this at all. So all this is being served up over the web. And what does that mean? Right there, it's dimming down. Isn't that cool? You can do that right, right there. And it also works on an iPod. And it works on a Windows phone. Yeah, it even flips around. So there's no app. What's really neat about this is there's no app. So all this, all these controls right here are all done uh, without an app. And so you can control and run everything um, right from the Arduino. There's no code uh, running on the, on the computer. There's no code running in the iPad, the iPod, or the Windows phone. So it's app free. Uh, okay, so this little program is going to be running down in the Arduino and what it does is it serves up a web page so let's take a look at the code and see how, how it all works so here's a here's a web page and here's the debug window let's bring the there we go it's a little easier so when we first run this thing um, we put in the web address and it comes up right here as a server and if we hit uh, reload I'm gonna hit the reload button there we go and we get all the information to request a web page back to the PC. And if you notice right here, there's a get with a slash, and there's nothing after it. And what we're going to look for is this get slash and then a character right after it. And that's the key to making this work. So let's send a pull light on. The pull light went on. And now we get an A. So we found an A, and we're going to turn the pull light on. Turn the ceiling light on. I guess I hit ceiling light off. Here's the ceiling light on command. Ceiling light just went on, and um, we sent we sent an S. So each time we hit one of these buttons, the uh, web page request to the Arduino has a get in it, and it also has this little slash and then a character. And it's this slash character that we're going to use, and you can actually see it up here. And we're going to we're going to use that to uh, control the Arduino. It seems to work pretty good. So let's take a look at the code. Okay. So what do we got to do? Well, first thing we got to do is run this program down on the Arduino. So let's take a look at the uh, code. First thing we've got is we've got a bunch of includes, and we define some specific includes to make this work. We need the ethernet.h and the firecracker.h. Those are the key ones. We got a couple of support ones, the SPI and the, and the W string. And then we get to find the pins where the uh, Arduino is uh, talking to the X10 um, control module. So we've got it hooked up on pins eight and nine, and we've got the delay set to a one. So we define the network address, an IP uh, address for this, and MAC address, standard for talking to an Ethernet shield. And we've got some variables. I've got a string, s string, and a command uh, string. And I'm just going to use the slash x. You could make this longer, incidentally. You're not, you're not limited by just one letter. So we go through and we initialize the Ethernet server uh, library. We set it up as a port on 80, which is default for HTTP. And then we open up the um, serial communications back to the PC. Uh, we're going to use that for debug. And this is standard right out of some of the other examples. 
and we send a program started and a server is at a certain location. Uh, it gives us back the IP address and so you can see that on the uh, debug uh, screen. And then we got to initialize the uh, X10. So these uh, pins set up the X10. Once we're uh, done with all that, then we can begin the main loop and listen for the incoming clients. And so once we get a client available, uh, we print out to the serial debugger that we got a new client. And once the uh, client is done with its HTTP request, um, we'll be able to uh, process the data. So while it's sending the data in um, and it's available, we're going to look at the letters, the characters that are coming across. So right here, uh, we have a client read. And it's loading those uh, characters into the variable C. And then we're concatenating those characters into the uh, string variable S. And once we get seven characters or less than seven characters in the buffer, then we're going to check for uh, the string to be equal to get, G-E-T. And that's in this if statement right here. Once we find uh, the letters G-E-T, we can then start looking for substrings after that with a slash followed by a, a letter. And that letter is the key to making all this work. So here's the decoding of the incoming commands. So we've got uh, command equals slash A or command equals slash B in the if statements. And depending on which if statement you're in, you'll execute one of the specific uh, X10 commands, prior to which a um, serial message will be sent off to the um, debug port so we can see what's happening. So that's how you decode what's coming in. And we got a whole s list of these uh, uh, commands that can come in, just arbitrary letters. You could make them longer, it doesn't matter. And then here's how we set up the HTTP uh, web page. Um, we send all this uh, HTML stuff over to the uh, uh, client uh, via client print line statement. And to make this all work, you really need this, this line right here right in the middle of this guy. This is the key to making it work. And this is a client print line statement with a form method of link and an action which uh, basically links back to the same uh, web page, but it, the, the trick is is right right here. You've got this uh, you've got this S. And that S, or the letter, it doesn't matter if it's an S or an A or whatever, that's the key to making this work. So you change that and it'll go to the specific um, if statement in the program and, and run it. So this is the this is the single line for the button and I've just commented uh, out uh, the rest of the line here so you can see it. So it's got that submit and then it's got the value. In this case it's den ceiling light on. And so every one of these print line statements with that form method equals link is another button on the web page. So that's the trick to making this work. There's no app required. Last thing you need is to clear out the receive string uh, after you uh, put the page up so that it's ready to get the next, uh, the next statement. Clear out the current uh, line uh, is blank variables, depending on whether you got a carriage return or not, and new line. And then uh, stop the client and print your disconnected. So once it's disconnected, it's waiting for right back up here because this loop continues it's waiting for the get so right here's the get so the next time you do something on the web page you click one of those buttons it's going to shoot back a get to the server and after the get is going to be this uh, string of slash a or slash b etc and then gets decoded in these if statements and you're able to uh, uh, cause the uh, Arduino to do something cool. So there you have it, one uh, Arduino control program. Okay, so here's how it's hooked up. We've got the uh, little Arduino uh, down the bottom, and we've got the Ethernet shield, we've got this little adapter shield, and we put one connector block on the top of the adapter shield so we could easily plug in our ground and uh, two digital lines on pins 8 and 9 and these hook up to this uh, DB9 connector which uh, plugs in to this which is the CM17A 
um, X10 RF transmitter module computer interface thing. And the way this thing works is it gets its power from two digital lines and it gets its signals from those same two digital lines. So you have to keep one on all the time and use the other one to send 40 bits of ones and zeros. And uh, so the computer program does that. And so there's no circuits at all on here. The only thing we had to do to build this was solder these little headers in and then solder the wires on up to this uh, connector. It's a standard uh, DB9. And um, you can see where the signals are hooked up right here. And the only other thing we did is we cut this notch right here. There's a notch in the top of the board, and that's to make room for this here uh, plug because it can't uh, can't bump into it. So you had to be real careful where we cut and uh, not short anything out. So we cut the cut the prototype module, and then to attach it, we just used a tie wrap. So there, there you have it. One tie wrap goes through existing holes and holds the uh, CM17A right to the prototype board. And there's a lamp module for the uh, DEN pole lamp. Little X10 module it's plugged into an extension cord on one side and then the lamp's plugged into the bottom of the other side. Okay, here's the uh, transceiver module for the X10. That's the antenna sticking out the side.